Hello, I'm Adrian Sassoon and I want to talk to you today about two objects made in white porcelain, very pierced bodies. Um, they have technical similarities, but one was made in 2020 and one was made uh, in the 1750s. This is a piece of Sèvres porcelain made in France at the French Royal Porcelain Factory and it's a pierced bowl on stand with a lid designed for chestnuts. We're actually not sure whether they were sweet uh, not sweet, hot or cold, but it's a chestnut bowl, a marronniere, of a model made from the 1750s with porcelain panels. You'll see against my dark jacket that are pierced and the bowl is pierced and the stand is pierced. And it's of a model of which we know a few examples. There's a pair with turquoise uh, parts to it in the Wallace Collection in London and another pair also with turquoise in the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. But they are quite rare. And there are one or two of these white ones with blue highlighting and gilding. How they're made is by moulding a form of this complex shape that you can see. And then, as the porcelain was slightly dry, a modeler was sitting there cutting, 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 cutting these openings. And you'll see in detail some of them. There's even um, the Im implication of a ribbon being twisted and tied and pulled in the porcelain at several junctions. And there's the implication also of cane work, sort of bamboo um, patterns of, of uh, being woven. The idea is obviously to allow air through to keep the objects um, aerated and presumably dried. They wouldn't keep them hot. And when a piece like this was made, it would be fired in a wood um, fueled kiln, probably with not great sophisticated temperature controls. So as it would go in, it would heat up and the body would shrink. That's what happens when you first fire ceramics and um, come out of the kiln, it would then later be glazed and painted and gilded and have more firings. But in those firings, as the porcelain changes in size, of course it wants to um, break apart where there are lines of weakness. And this is um, always evident. It's underneath the glaze. You can see stretch marks, basically. And um, it's very normal to find that on a piece from the 18th century. Today, when you fire a piece of porcelain, it also goes from the size it is when it's wet and it dries down. And then kiln firing, even under completely organized, sophisticated electronic temperature controls, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, everything's got to move. So the more complex the shape, still today in 2020, it has to work together with itself. The porcelain in this case has to shrink all together so that you have no cracking or um, stretch marks that um, you'd seen on an 18th century piece just now. And this is a piece made by Nico Conti, who is a Maltese artist based in London. He went to the Royal College of Art in London and graduated from there in the summer of 2019. And this is a piece recently made, which he would have made by CAD modeling. And his shapes are very much influenced by things like Gothic architecture, and especially by textile patterns. And you can see from close-ups how it looks like a woven, woven object, but it's porcelain. And you don't weave porcelain, but it's built up by three-dimensional printing on a computer controlled uh, machine um, on an intimate scale. Uh, he only makes one of these pieces and when I pick it up I can show you how one thing that fascinates me about his work, you have complex, complex shapes but instead of having a sort of plain interior, complexity in his interior, there's no base to this piece as you can see, but the complexity within and as well as without is really, really remarkable. And that probably could not be made by human hand. It is made by the human touch of the designing. And then it's printed by a machine which um, provides an extrusion in complex, complex computer controlled patterns and builds it up. And one thing the artist does is he actually manipulates the piece afterwards. He's pulled out some of these elements that you'll see in detail, make it f seem even more like a textile that's been frozen in time by the process of kiln firing. Just uh, wanted to talk about those two today because I see such amazing similarities of ambition, technique and achievement.